Hey guys and welcome back. In this video I wanted to talk about something that's been bothering me for the last little while, uh, specifically about Nintendo and how I feel that they are uh, striving and trying to ascertain way too much control uh, over over their IP, over their platforms, over you know uh, their image and over a bunch of things. And um, I never really felt this way before until I was affected personally by them. But um, anyway, I just want to go over you know, five or six things that I feel that really exemplify their need for control, their need to just control everything. So um, I want to start off with obviously what's most important to me is that, and it's not new news, may, many of you will know that, but uh, the fact that they take all ad revenue from Let's Play videos on YouTube. So this is my first point here. Um, everyone knows what Let's Plays are. I, I haven't done many of them. I've actually only... I'm in the process of doing one right now with Donkey Kong. I think I'm on episode 10. Um, I'm doing this for fun and also to learn how to do it and stuff. Uh, but this has personally affected me given that, um, you know, it will affect the choices I make with the videos going forward. So for those of you don't, that don't know what's happening, it's this. Nintendo basically said, um, you know... Uh, for let's play videos, for videos where you play the entire game and it's you know you do commentary on it and so on and so forth, which are extraordinarily popular on YouTube. They're not my most popular videos, but they're you know for a lot of people like PewDiePie or other players, they're their most popular videos. So for those videos, Nintendo looks at them as they're just playing the game, and people who are watching that footage are not going to um, buy the game. They're just watching that footage to see what the game is about, and that's it. And so subsequently, they decided that, you know, if this is going to happen, we are going to take ad revenue from people who are making money off that. So uh, basically what happens is when you upload a Let's Play video of a Nintendo published uh, game, what happens right away is that YouTube flags it, doesn't remove it, but doesn't let you monetize the video. It automatically monetizes to Nintendo and they get they make the money off your video. So basically, this has personally affected you know, my own videos and what I'll choose to make in the future. And many other YouTubers agree. A lot of people have stopped making Nintendo Let's Plays altogether and dropped them, dropped them altogether and stuff like that. Uh, and it's kind of weird because Nintendo tried to act like they weren't doing anything wrong. And, uh, you know, by saying that, oh, other people, you know, other publishers were removing videos, removing videos entirely off YouTube that were had, had their games on it while we're just taking your money. So this is incredibly hilarious to me, given that 99.99999% of publishers and companies don't take ad revenue from Let's Play YouTubers, including the other platform holders, Sony and Microsoft. They, they don't. Uh, this is a very tiny, tiny percentage that ever went on YouTube to remove videos or to, to or, do, or do that often. So Nintendo's acting like they're the good guys. Like, we're not removing your videos. We're just going to take your money. But, you know, th the thing that is most mind-boggling to me with regards to this is that Nintendo is worried that if we're doing Let's Play videos of their games, that they're going to some people aren't going to buy the game. So the best thing to do, if they really believe that, the best thing to do is to remove the video, take it off. You know, like go after the person, say don't like you know give them a, a copyright strike or whatever, and then remove the video. That way, you know, there's less of them on YouTube and less people get spoiled. More money in Nintendo's pocket for people who want to buy. But that's not the case. Nintendo knows that. People who watch Let's Play videos of a game get excited for the game and they buy it. They know that. They're just looking to make more money and have more control over their IP by taking basically really well-known YouTubers, uh, their, their AdSense money, their ad money, and their ad revenue and everything. They're just looking to make more money. This is not about anything else other, other than that. And I just think that's really, really crappy. It's just Nintendo trying to reach in and control things that they shouldn't control. Now... At least they're not doing it with reviews so far. They haven't done it to any of my reviews yet and uh, my comparisons yet, specifically with Let's Play videos. But going forward, I don't know if I'm going to do another one, um, another Nintendo Let's Play after Donkey Kong's done. Like, I, I am enjoying Donkey Kong immensely. I will finish that Let's Play, and it's a, definitely a good learning experience for me. But I don't think that going forward that I'll do any more Nintendo published games. And hopefully it stays that, um, maybe I'll do, I'll do more 3DS games, but they won't be from Nintendo. Uh, hopefully it'll stay like that. So the next thing that I want to talk about, which has to relate to this also, is how Nintendo attempted to sm to stop uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee from being streamed at the Evolution Fighting Game Tournament. So this has to do with you know exactly what I was saying. They want to they they said they wanted to protect their IP, that they didn't want anyone else making any money or any ad ad revenue off of their their games. So 
uh, they did reverse this decision after huge backlash. Like it, you know, it's a massive, massive backlash. But what I find most personally strange about this is that the game is so old. Like they're not even making the game anymore. All copies of it are being sold secondhand. Uh, all the profit Nintendo made from that is is done. Like they're not making any more profit from it. So what's the point? I don't understand in trying to, you know, ban that from being streamed it doesn't make any sense to me at all I, that's just a move that that's just that's just right away i feel like that's nintendo's control reflex you know they see it there they they're after it right away um so a few more points like you know on demos for example as many 3ds owners know uh maybe some of you don't know but there are download limits on demos obviously uh usually it's 30 some i've seen 15 i've seen 10 um this isn't a big deal really um it's not a deal breaker for me but it just kind of irks me the wrong way that you know every time i play a demo sometimes like i've really i've really liked playing demos like the ninja gaiden demo as i've said before like last year i've played that 40 times or more the burnout uh, paradise demo i've played that even more you know getting online and playing and everything because if you're really excited for a game and it's not coming out for a while why limit the demo you know the more i play it the more i get excited the more i want to run out and buy it uh, limiting demos is like, you know, it's not a huge deal breaker, but it does feel, it does irk me the wrong way. I know it's the same, it's the same with a lot of people. And again, it has to do with Nintendo reaching out or overreaching for their control. So uh, another one is that they have age restrictions on the eShop. So, uh, or the, or rather they, they ask you for your age confirmation in many territories. I know, uh, I live in Quebec in Canada and they do every time I log into the eShop have to ask me my birthday. I know it's not the case everywhere in Canada and everywhere in the United States, but I do know in some territories that this is the case, and it's not the case with Microsoft or Sony systems. It's just with Nintendo systems. So also another thing is, um, you know, friend codes in general. I'm not a big fan of friend codes. I would like to be able, it, you know, just give out an online name and have everyone add me, and, you know, especially you guys, like I would love to, to, to give it out. But, um, you know, having to, I, don't, I haven't memorized my friend code, uh, it's hard to just like, you know, if I meet someone really cool, like, you know, that's, that's playing a game I like, and I would like to add them on my on my 3ds. I don't know my friend code by heart. They probably don't know the friend code by heart either if uh, if the situation happened, uh, you know, vice versa. It's just a really cumbersome way of adding people. And you know, like, so many people who buy 3ds, they're not little kids, they're not little kids who are going to get get taken advantage of. And I just feel like this is just too much. Uh, also, the fact that to do with friend codes, uh, there's no messaging to random people. And, you know, if I see someone who's really awesome in Mario Kart online, like, you know, I can't go and message them or add them or anything. I have to know them personally. And when I log off, they're gone. I'm never going to see them again, which, you know, it just it just sucks. There's just too much limitation and too much control on Nintendo's part there. And the last thing with regards to this is the no account systems. Now, Nintendo did talk about they did say that they're there they know that there is demand for account systems uh account based systems rather um and that the friend code system and everything is really janky and it's not working properly so i do have hope for wii u and 3ds that nintendo will get a good account system but more important you know than than the friend code system and everything with regards to account systems is that for example um you know, when you want to buy new hardware, which I have done three times now, new 3DS hardware or new Wii U hardware, to you have to jump through so many hoops in order to get your games back on the system. You can't take your 3DS, sell it, and buy a new 3DS because you, need, you have to do a system transfer. And even when you do a system transfer, that alone, your game saves for your digital games don't transfer over, as well as some other things. So it's just, it's just so weird. Whereas like if I bought a new Vita, which I did, um, you just take out the memory card, you deactivate your Vita, take out the memory card, pop the new one in, and it's the, essentially the same system. Like, there's absolutely no hoops to jump through. It takes two seconds, and that's it. So these are all things I feel that like Nintendo could improve. But it's weird because I feel that like Nintendo is extending their need for control to other things, not just their own platforms, but into how the, the company has is behaving in general such as like you know for example at e3 they didn't have an e3 press conference this year i mean that's shocking that's crazy like i, I couldn't like e3 is a time where everyone's looking at you and everyone's getting hyped up and sony pretty much owes all the momentum it has for the ps4 
to E3, to all the attention they paid to it and to the big spectacle and everything. All those pre-orders and, you know, all the hype, positive hype it has is because of that conference. And just skipping that to put out a Nintendo Direct video, same thing as TGS and Gamescom, by the way, Nintendo didn't show up to in large capacity to either event. Um, you know, instead opting for Nintendo Direct announcements, uh, which gives them obviously the greatest amount of control. Like, you know, there's nobody heckling or booing or, or anything in, in the crowd and, 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 you know, that's why they did it. It gives them the greatest amount of control, but it doesn't give them the greatest audience. Who watches Nintendo Direct videos? Nintendo fans. Okay. And when you're going and trying to market your product, you want to go and market your product to everybody and show everyone why you're the best and why Nintendo is the best and why Nintendo does things or, or, or does what they do better than anyone else. That's what Nintendo has to show. And they're not showing that by only releasing Nintendo Direct videos, which no one's going to watch but Nintendo fans. So I just feel like their need for control is getting in the way of how awesome this company really is. And, you know, personally, I think that Nintendo would do well to open up a little more. And definitely, there are more points to how, you know, how they need to feel the need to to control all their stuff than I mentioned here. This is just a few of them that have personally affected me. But, um, you know, I do feel that they would do well to open up a little more and to, you know, get account-based systems, get rid of friend codes, you know, no more eShop age confirmation. Forget the download limits, you know, no more download limits on demo. And stop taking ad revenue from Let's Play videos. Let's Play videos help your sales. They're not hurting your sales, you know. Or stick with your message, Nintendo. You know, like, stick with your message. If you feel that... Let's play videos are taking your IP away, you know, or, or or damaging your IP or taking away sales revenues from your games. Then go after those people and remove them. Make it so that no one's making those let's play videos. Don't just take their money, you know, because then that you know is creating a really negative image. So anyway, that's my point. That was my my little rant. Uh, you can see in the background here I'm playing Animal Crossing. Um, I won't be reviewing this game. It's not a game for me uh, to review. I really don't feel like I'm equipped well enough to review it. But I am having fun and I will continue to play it. Anyway, I will be uploading more Donkey Kong Let's Play videos shortly, as well as, uh, I guess, some Lone Survivor gameplay since I just got that on Vita. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.